Right, here comes the next video. So, next part, open up Safari, and now we just type in the IP address of our home center. Now, as you remember, it should be 10.01.57. Um, but one thing to remember is sometimes what happens is if we ever reset the router, have to turn it on and off, or you change a router or thing, then what can happen is the IP address will be lost and therefore a new one will be reassigned. To counteract that, what we can do is give the unit a fixed IP address. And to be honest, it is quite easy to do on this one. So once we've, so rather than keep using Fibaro Finder to find out what the IP address is, um, if we give it a fixed one, then we know exactly what it is and we just have to remember it and that's all even if we do forget you can use Fibaro Finder to find it again so best way to do it is first of all we need to log in so info at uk and password oops I've forgotten the password already Oh. Ah. So many passwords. Anyway, so we're back to um, our main screen that we uh, ended with on the last session. So, configuration tab. Click on that, and straight away you'll see some in general information serial number, MAC address, and software version. The last backup which was done when I first plugged it in and the weather provider is Yahoo weather and it becomes like a little snippet so we can actually utilize that in scenes if you wanted to at the moment there's nothing installed so there's no main temperature main humidity or main light level sensors as such just yet um, what we're interested in at the moment is the LAN settings now connection type DACP is where the router gives everything its own access so first straight away we need to just change that to static IP address that means it will always be allocated this particular IP address you can turn the unit off on and off and you can turn the router on and off the modem on and off it doesn't matter it'll always be given this IP address um, this one here remote access should be enabled and the reason for that is if you ever outside the house and you want to log back into the to the home center to activate a light or check anything then this if this is set to no then there's no way you can access it so you have to make sure it's enabled yes unless you don't want to access it from outside then in that case put it to no but we do so static IP make sure that's yes just leave them numbers preset hit the save button it's now saving it's now completely saved. Whilst we're on the configuration page, let's get the settings organized for remote access as well. So we know what our local access is, as in when we're logging in from inside the house. So that was my email address, and which is just up here. So that's my user ID and my password, which I set. We now want to um, do the remote access. So Fibaro have done a twin login system. You have a password, username and password for your remote access pages. Once you've done that, you then have to, to log in again using local access. That might seem a bit long-winded, but it, there's a couple of reasons. One, it's a two-step process, so it's therefore safer. Also, if you decide to create more users on the system, so your um, a user for your, your spouse, your partner, your kids, um, they can then log in and only see what they are supposed to see. So what I mean by that is, say this one, this user, the main user, this will, so in this case, it's me. I can see everything. I can control everything. I can add, remove. Uh, turn things on and off, run scenes, no problem. Say my kids, 
I only want them to be able to turn the lights on and off in their own rooms and that's it. So what I would do is I would create a, a username and password for my daughter and I'll only allow her to see the devices in her room and that's it. And therefore when she logs on using her app, she would log on with the the remote access details which is the, the one we're going to set up in a second and then her local access will be her name, a password and that's all she'll be able to see. We'll go on to that as well. So let's start with the first basics. Open up a page and it's home.fibaro.com that is the name of the the main remote access website. Uh, we need to register so let's click on register. Now we need to create a, a name so Yorkshire Automation oopsie daisies uh, password of your choice and we need to give uh, just put our names and an email address click register that's it simple as that login now that we've logged in uh, sorry we've created it we just need to log in so let's log in and password now this logs in now at the moment we don't have a home center so this is where the home centers would be listed so if you had um, more than one home center they'd come in a list here but uh, we've got no home center yet so we need to add one so let's click on add here we need the serial number and the MAC address so let's click back to our local click back to general and here's a serial number I'm just going to copy and paste it and of course here's a MAC address again same as before copy and paste add it's now been added now this is what you should look page should look like that uh, gear cog icon is nice and bright it's not uh, dimmed and all we do click on that and what it does is brings us back to our main logging in page from uh, so we were able to log in so this means I'm now able to log in and then I put my username and password in again spell uh, and then log in oh. uh, Yorkshire Automation okay. oh that's because I put the log it also helps if you put the right email uh, password in as well it's good to be secure, but there's too many passwords. So I think a few of you can uh, relate to that as well. Now I'm logging back into my home center through the Fibaro servers. So effectively going outside and back in again. So this is all working. It means that now if I'm out away from the house, I can get any laptop, any computer and still able to log in and view my own home center. So that's okay. So what I'll do is log out there and log off again there. So that's it. So just remember home.fibaro.com. Um, that's what you need to remember uh, for remote access. Right, back to where we were. Let's look on access control. Actually, you know what? We'll come back to access control. Let's put a couple of devices in first and then, then you can see what I mean. So now, I think we'll uh, we'll call it a day there. It's been about ten minutes. So, oh, before I go, important thing: backup. 
at the moment we've not done any major changes um, major changes but this is from the backup screen so it's always a good idea every so often just to hit create um, enter this brief description um, updated uh, that you want whatever you want and then click on start and what that does it backs that uh, configuration up to the USB recovery stick as I showed earlier in the other video and if you get in the habit of doing that regularly especially when you're adding and removing devices um, and creating scenes so it means that if something does go wrong you don't lose everything you can um, recover up to a good backup and then start from there again it doesn't take that long to create the backup and once it's done it comes back onto the main screen um, I'm just gonna leave it now and um, thanks for watching and look out for the next one